As you're uh, doing well, I've got some good news for you. This is the last presentation you'll have to go through with me. Um, I know this isn't really how we intended to finish the year, but uh, I hope that you found the last couple of weeks useful. I know you will in the near future if you uh, if you remember any of it. You know, keep it uh, keep it important and useful in your life as you start to make some money. Uh, and one last thing we didn't cover that we're going to hop right in here today, and then we'll catch up at the end is um, let's get you that job first, right? Let's not uh, let's not jump to saving the money from the from the job. Let's actually let's get you that job. So without further ado, we'll hop right in here. Uh, it's going to be super useful. It's not just applying for a job. It's going to be several things. Um, so I'm going to help you create a resume, write a professional email and attach your resume and fill out an application. Now this professional email part here in the middle is huge. Uh, I've learned that in the last few weeks since we've been doing this. Uh, a lot of you guys have no clue how you should actually be addressing uh, teachers and potential employers and then professors and all these folks that you're going to be needing to email in the near future. So you really got to clean that up. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be important for, you know, like if you're going to go to college um, and communicate with your professor, then you don't want to put them off right away. You want you want them to read your email and be like, oh, that's an intelligible person and, and maybe an intelligent person as well. And, and um, they'll be more receptive to whatever argument or you know, whatever you're trying to get across in your email. Same with an employer. You know, you write a silly little email, they might just chunk your application and resume in the garbage. So let's hop right in here. Uh, why do I even need a resume? You might be thinking you're a young person. You haven't done anything. How do you know? I mean, what, what could you possibly put in a, in a resume? Well, one thing right off the bat, it's going to show a potential employer that you put some time into this, that you didn't just... Oh, uh, you know, okay, I need a job. My mom says I need a job. I'm going to look online, find a job, and, you know, send some junk out. Like, take some time, make it look pretty good. Show them that you care. If you do it well, it can actually set you apart from other applicants, even if it doesn't say a whole lot. Just if it looks nice and crisp, it's to the point, um, then, then it could set you apart. It also shows respect for the employer's time. You know, I've I've been on the, the end of hiring before, uh, you know, in previous careers before I became a teacher. Um, it's not, a, it doesn't show a lot of respect for the employer's time if I have to go through as the, as the person who might be hiring and look at a lot of really terrible emails and resumes and applications. Okay, that just gets moved to the bottom of the pile or to the trash. All right, so to prepare your resume, uh, there's going to be a sample resume on the next slide that covers uh, the most important things that you need to include. Um, it's also important to set yourself apart, but uh, you need to avoid some huge mistakes that can make uh, employers pass you up real quick. Because you got to remember, on the first go through, employers are going to thumb through all the applications resumes real fast and find the ones that they can definitely chunk. Okay, that's the way they do it. It's the way it's always been done. You go through and you can find the ones that you can just easily throw away to begin with. And then after that, you go through and you find the ones that actually could be useful and you start sort of ranking them that way. And then you go through and start digging into the last few that you actually think might be able to be hired for this job. Uh, so some, some big mistakes to avoid. Don't use like... Employers see these cliches all the time. I'm a great communicator. Well, you, anybody can say that, you know. I'm the best applicant in the world. What does that mean? You know, what is something that's a concrete example that you've done? And it doesn't have to be a prior work experience. Um, you can think of a lot of things, and we'll go over what those could be here in a minute. But it could be uh, on a sports team or a club at school or something in the community or church. It could be almost anything. Uh, try to avoid typos. Go back over your resume multiple times to ensure that there's no mistakes. Um, especially if it's going to be a job where you might have to communicate with folks via writing. Uh, you want to make sure that, that there's no silly errors in there. If you do happen to make a resume that's like really, really specific to one job and it maybe mentions that job or that employer in the resume, um, don't accidentally send that resume to another job. Okay? That could be pretty disastrous. So I would encourage you to make sort of a generic resume that you can send to a lot of folks or at least one type of job, but maybe not a specific company. Um, that way you don't get caught in a little bind like that. 
So here's a, a really simple resume that you can do. Uh, you know, you want to have your name and the way that they can contact you up top. Um, but this first thing I've included is big. Uh, somebody showed me this early in my career and it's been super helpful. Um, put it right there at the top. It's called your personal statement. Use this area right here. I would say three to four lines tops. And pretend that you get the employer like away from the interview process. You just have 30, 60 seconds or so to just tell them exactly why you'd be good at this job, what makes you a little bit different. So all of you are living in Huffman, going to Hargrave High School. You know, your background, your life is pretty similar, but all of you are different in some way. Okay. You've done different things. You've got different families. So this is the chance to say that. And this is the chance to brag a little bit, okay? Do not be boastful, but don't be afraid to say why you're good, okay? This is the portion that you get to do that. You get to just say why you'd be good at this, okay? Uh, then next, you'll go through some work history. You may not have a lot, um, so go through and include the dates, where you worked, the position. And you can see here, like I've put uh, some examples of how you can sort of dress up what you did. You don't want to lie or exaggerate, but you can say what you did in a way that shows what skills you developed. So like, let's say you're a cashier at a store, you know, you're responsible for interactions with customers and vendors. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Work directly with the owner and management to improve the appearance of the store. You know, you could have just been cleaning up or redesigning a little set piece that's in front of um, like where the you know certain products are set up. But that sounds way better when you say it that way, and it's still the truth. And then you can show that you stuck around and worked your way up, started as a grocery bagger, worked up to cashier. So you can you can take almost any job, and it's not really spinning it necessarily because you're not trying to make them believe something that's not true. You're just in a very intelligent way, telling them what skills you learned and how that might be applicable to other jobs. Um, and then you can include your education and when you went to school there. And then uh, if, you're, if you're done with school, you can say, you know, uh, 2020 graduate, you can add that in there. And then references, you can just put those down at the bottom. Uh, if you want to, you could put, uh, you know, you could take some of these spaces out and, and you know, expand the margins, make the document uh, be able to hold a little more information, and you could put like awards or skills, um, other qualifications, depending on what type of job. Like you might want to put, like if you're going to work on a pipeline this summer, you might put that you have some welding certifications or something like that in there. Uh, there's a lot of different things you could do. Um, on this one, I wanted to show you how you could put a limited amount of information, uh, have a lot of white space, because that's going to catch an employer's eye, like how clean this looks. Even though it's pretty standard, um, it makes it easy for them to find the three or four major things that you've put in there, and uh, it'll really pop, and it'll catch their attention. So that's a, that's a good way to do that. So the example, uh, simple. It can be expanded. You know, you can include all those honors and everything else that you've got with, uh, that you've gotten along the way. Um, do not worry if you haven't had a job before, uh, but you need to include something that'll demonstrate it. So an example of what you can include could be volunteering, church involvement, community service. Uh, you know, if you were a captain or a leader of some sort on a, on a sport or, or a club at school, you can definitely include that. Now, this is the portion you guys really need to pay attention, writing a professional email. Uh, lots of you have been struggling with that uh, when, you've, when you've written to me and I'm sure other teachers. So uh, when you're applying for a job, especially if it's posted online, you're going to probably have to submit your resume by email when filling out the application. If your email shows a lack of effort, respect, uh, or lack of time put in it, uh, you will self-eliminate right away and not get the job. So you should use these same skills when emailing a teacher, me, a professor, uh, anybody you're trying to earn a scholarship from, you know, if you're turning in a scholarship application via email, a university admissions office, you know, if you're trying to get into a school and you're trying to compete with other folks, uh, don't write a silly email. Be smart about this. Okay, and of course, any potential employer. So your email. Make sure your email address is appropriate. Let that sink in. It should probably just be some part of your name, something simple. You know, mine is C McDermott at, you know, whatever mail I'm using at the time. You know, HuffmanISD.net or 
you know, huffman.k12.tx.us. Like, just try to make it part of your name. Okay. I've noticed lots of you don't do this. Uh, before we were using Google Classroom at the beginning of the year, you guys were writing me from some ridiculous emails. Okay. Part of your name, nothing inappropriate, gross, or controversial. Okay. This is important. The subject. You should write something that states the purpose of the email in the subject line. Each word should be capitalized as if you're writing the title of a book. It should be short but thorough. Okay, I've noticed you guys don't really know how to do this either. Your subject to me are um, quite strange sometimes. So if you'll notice when I've written you guys directly, I always try to write a good example of what that should look like. So the examples here. Joe Smith application and resume. That would be a great subject if your name was Joe Smith. You can replace that with your name. Example two, question regarding resume assignment. So if you were going to write me a question about this resume assignment, that might be the title of your email, the subject line. And then when you get started, get things started off on the right foot. When you write a greeting, write something appropriate and addresses them with respect. Uh, definitely not just, hey, Heard you had a job, right? A good example might be, good morning, Ms. Williams, or whoever it is. Put a comma there and jump down to the body of the email. Uh, I think it's a really good idea to thank them for their time. Now, don't sit there and like gush over how thankful you are, but just say it and move on. State why you're writing to them. Use full sentences and proper punctuation. Uh, capitalize. The reason I put that as a one-word sentence, even though that's not ideal for you writing your email, is because you guys are so used to texting that uh, your emails look silly sometimes. You want to make sure you don't do that if you're trying to get a job. So a reminder, this is not a text. Example of what a body of the email could be like. It could be short, respectful, and get out of there. Thank you for taking time to receive my email today. I'm interested in the opening you have for a cashier at your company. I've attached my resume in this email. Please feel free to contact me with any further questions or if you wish to set up an interview. Thanks again for your time, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Okay, that's all you got to put. Then we'll go down to the bottom. You'll have a closing salutation uh, and your email signature. So any number of words can be used to professionally say goodbye in an email. Cordially, sincerely, regards. Anything like that. You can look up more online if you don't like those. Um, you'll also want to create an email signature. Uh, you can do it to where it just pops up every time on your email. So you can do that. Uh, you'll notice that mine's the same all the time. Okay. Make it simple. Uh, you can put your closing salutation there. Uh, and then your email signature is usually just your name, uh, your phone number, and your email. Makes it super simple. Be sure to attach your email or attach your resume to the email correctly and make sure it's on there before you hit send because if you tell them that your resume is attached and then you hit send and you haven't attached the resume yet, then that's already a warning sign to them that maybe you're not uh, paying attention to what you're doing and maybe you wouldn't be the best employee. Now, we know that's not always true. I've done it many, many times. I'm sure you have too. You know, Everybody can probably admit to that if they're being honest. Um, that doesn't make you a bad employee, but it may be a warning sign in the process when lots of people are applying for jobs. Uh, it's really best to convert your resume to a PDF so that it cannot be altered easily, uh, but it also ensures that it can be opened by almost anybody, even if they're using a PC or a Mac. So uh, what, what I mean by that is if you send a Word file, like a Microsoft Word file to somebody that uses Mac, uh, then it might either not open or open funny, uh, if you send, if you use a Mac and you make it in Pages and send it some, to somebody that's using a PC, Word will not open Pages at all. Pages will open Word, but not the other way around. Um, so as you progress in life and in your career, you may want to include a cover letter as well. We're not going to go over that today. It's basically uh, just a short letter that'll be somewhat like the body of the email you sent, and. Uh, it'll just be an expansion on your personal statement, your education, and your experience. So you'll just get to add some detail about those things you were saying about yourself, you know. Um, and it gives you kind of an opportunity to expand on that. Uh, you know, that's where maybe you can tug on the heartstrings a little bit or, you know, do a little persuasive speaking, so to speak. Uh, proofread one more time. 
Okay, go back through your resume again to ensure there's no mistakes. Make sure you gave your application the same amount of attention as your email and resume. So if there's like a online application or if you had to fill something out or if you had to attach it, um, just make sure you did all the appropriate capitalization and punctuation of any actual application you did. And then again, I'm putting this on there again, double check that you actually attached your resume. Here's a few resources to help. There's a, um, a video about writing a resume. Just got some helpful information in there. Uh, we didn't get to spend much time on this. Um, I talked about it maybe once or twice right before we got out. Um, this is a really cool website that talks about, you basically click on a city in Texas and then you, uh, you, you answer some questions. It's basically about what kind of lifestyle you want to live. And then it tells you how much you have to make uh, per month at your job to live in that city. So it's a pretty interesting reality check for some of you guys. You might want to check that out. And then the last one is the um, a video showing the steps to actually create a resume in Word. So not what to put in it, but how to construct it. Like so, how to make that in Microsoft Word so that it uh, so that it looks good. So more of the sort of the construction side of it. So the good news is that is the last presentation we'll have to do. Um, so that's it, guys. Uh, if you ever have any questions about anything that we've covered uh, or just anything at all that you think I might be able to help with, you know how to contact me. You know what the email address is. Um, good luck out there. You know I don't know what graduation is going to look like, so if this is the last time you see my ugly face, uh, just remember we've kind of given you some things uh, at the beginning of the year in government that uh, are important. You remember we talked a lot about, um, you know, don't put all your faith in, you know, a team, which is essentially a political, you know, might be in charge or anything like that, okay, given time, because that's going to change. You know, political parties, leaders, they're going to come and go. Put your faith in the ideals that you believe in, and then go back and look at some of those things we talked about, you know, the ideals that uh, were there when this country was created. So look at that. And then as we move forward into economics, um, hopefully you've learned some things about you know, how the world operates. And then these last few weeks, uh, maybe some things that will help you be real successful in it. So again, uh, I'll leave you with this. Um, you know, you can do all those other things we talked about, but one thing that's going to help you um, go the furthest and, and make life a little bit easier is just always try to be a good human. Okay, if you start there, uh, you'll be in real good shape. So that's all I've got for you. Uh, this is posted on the, um, as a, just a PowerPoint you can click through as well. And there's just going to be one assignment. You're going to need to write a resume yourself. You get to pick the job. So it needs to be a real job. You find it. Uh, you'll submit the resume to me and you'll also, um, uh, submit the body of an email to me. Uh, saying that you're going to attach that resume and that you're applying for the job. So you get a little bit of practice. I'll give you some feedback. Um, unless you just crush it and you do really well, then I'll just give you 100. Um, and then we can move on. So see you guys later.